That's the call to worship. Be ready to worship the Lord today. Yes. for your Holy Spirit to just fall on us today. And we just look up and we know the time's drawing near when you will appear. Yes, Lord. And we're thankful for that as well. Lord, have your way today in this service to the people that have come, to the people that are online. Move in their hearts and in their lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Ah. I hope you didn't miss me last week. I heard it was fantastic anyway. Yeah. So the whole week was great. So praise God. Amen. <laughs> yes. Todd missed Micah. And Micah thought about Todd every day. <laughs> and he also called his dog every day, too, and talked to his dog online. You yes. call me. Oh, my he messaged you. Come on, you know he messaged you. Alright. Blessings. God is so good. Amen. Ah. <laughs> what we do for our grandchildren. Anyway. <laughs> Brother Todd, would you ask God blessing? Thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning. Amen. Thank you for keeping us through the night. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every little thing, mm-hmm. good and bad, mm-hmm. because you're trying to bring something out in us. Mm-hmm. And we just want to give you all the glory and all the faith and ask for a, a blessing over this hiding today. And I ask for a blessing over everyone in this church today. May the Lord keep you and guide you in all his ways. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say amen. 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 Ah. I know good things are happening uh, all around us. Amen. Yes. Uh, we have a water baptism today. Yes. We have two people who are going to get water baptized. Are they here? Yes. Are they here at all? <laughs> Brother Matt would like to have them give their testimonies. And I think this would be the best time. Amen. Can you tell the story? <laughs> you want to come up, Bob, or you want to stay there? I'll, I'll stay right there. <laughs> I'll stay right there. But shout it, shout it. All right, speak a little loud for us. As a young Catholic Christian boy, I was baptized when I was about 12 years old. And I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, today I know what I'm doing. Hallelujah. I'm welcoming the Lord in my body, my soul, uh, and I hope that I can be uh, a good Christian. I know I can be a good Christian and serve the Lord. And I appreciate this opportunity today. Hey, uh, finish the story, though. Hey, that's good. <laughs> that's how the Captain Perry part. Uh, I was talking to Pastor Matt this morning, and, and I referred back to the Kathy Perry presentation on Africa, mm. and she was talking about the DNA uh, of the Lord, of Jesus, in all of us, and it made so much sense to me, and that's kind of how I started this path, and then talking to my friend John Mello, uh, I told her I was concerned doing this, and she calls me this morning and says, why don't you do it today? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> somebody else. Does somebody else wish she had water baptized today? Okay. We'll start with one and we'll see what happens downstairs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, tomorrow evening starts Passover. And rather than do Passover Seder this year, which I couldn't possibly get together because we had so much going on already, um, I decided to do the four cups of Passover today and tell you how important they were to Jesus and the disciples. Did you hear that? (laughs) And how important they are to us because each one represents something different that Jesus did for us. Each one of these four cups represents something great that Jesus has done for each one of you. Amen. Amen. Now, tonight I'm going to do the four crowns that were uh, placed in the temple and for renewal. And that's looking forward to the end times as well as next Sunday morning I'm doing the red heifer offering. 
which is something that has caused war this, this past year. Because they're ready to do it and, it, and uh, there are people who don't want them to do it. <laughs> because it makes the nation of Israel holy, it makes Jerusalem holy, and then it paves the way then that they can build the temple, which the Bible says that they will do. Ezekiel temple has not been built yet, and the Bible says that the Antichrist will sit where? In the, in the temple. So there has to be a temple. <laughs> and that's how... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And if, if you read the list of the people that are at war with Israel uh, and look at Ezekiel 38, you'll find that all those countries are in that list. Plus there's going to be a few more. But it's easy for them to pull in more. Amen. Okay, so today, yes. Lord, we ask your blessing upon your word, that it would touch our hearts, that it would minister to us in a special way, for you are everything to us. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So this is scripture, Luke 22. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called Passover. And Jesus said to Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they went, and when the hour was come, verse 14, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And then he said, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Did they hear that? Did they hear that? Did they really, really, really hear that he was going to suffer? I'm not sure. Did they, did they realize how close it was? I'm not sure. They seem to like not want... They seem like husbands of wives. Now, husbands of wives are like this. We only hear you when we want to. <laughs> Have you noticed, ladies? That men only hear you when they want to? Well, I believe that the, uh, <laughs> that the apostles didn't want to. They did not want to hear that. They did not want to hear that. They, they liked what was going on. They, were, they, they said, no, Lord, we should go in this direction <laughs> and take over the world. You know? No, we don't want you to go suffer. But the Passover, having been prepared carefully in that upper room, it had to have four cups of wine at the head of the table. So it must have been that night, that Passover feast of the Lord, that four cups were placed before Jesus, for he was the rabbi of the Savior. Amen. So these were placed before Jesus. Now to the Jews, these four cups represent something very similar to what they mean to us. But we're going to get both meanings this, this morning. Praise God. Amen. So you're going to learn the first for, for the Jews. Okay. The four promises of God to the nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 2, verses 24 and 5. And God heard their groanings. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect toward them. Therefore God said, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you out. In other words, I will separate you from them. The Egyptians were a type and a symbol of a simple pagan world. And there's certainly a simple pagan world out there. Yes. Even today. Mm -hmm. That we need to be brought out from. That we need to be separated from. Amen? So with this first promise, we came, uh, <clears throat> became the, the cup of separation unto God. 
In Truas, it means the cup of sanctification. For God has called you, and God has called me. Amen? He's called Peter and Andrew. He called James and John. He called Philip and Nathaniel. He called Mark and Beth. He called <laughs> Matt and Kathy. He called Paul and Susan. He called all of us. He's called us out to be a separate people, to be a peculiar people unto him. And he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. Now, I don't know about you, but before I knew Jesus, I had a restless soul. I felt like everything was meaningless. The whole world was dark. Uh, uh, you know, what's the sense? What's the sense? And then God called me. Pulled me out. He pulled me out. Separated me. And said, let me talk to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that was the first cup. Should I have that? I think I should take a sip from it. Amen. This is the cup of sanctification. It's for you. It's for me. He sits. He passed it to all the disciples. And each one of them took and participated of it. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he went on to the second cup. Now the second cup comes after all the plagues are, are told about that Jesus, not, I'm going to say Jesus, is that okay if I say Jesus? That Jesus brought them through. <laughs> Amen? One plague after another plague after another plague after another. Do you feel like that sometimes? Do you feel like God is always pulling you out of something and out of something and out of something and out of something? Amen? And, and he pulled them through. And, he, and so at the end, after they go through all the plagues that the Lord had delivered them through, they sing the song, Dianu. And Dianu means, if, if it wasn't for, you know, if it, were, if it was just this that you did, I'd be thankful. If it, and it goes through a whole long list. If it wasn't just, if you had, had just saved me, I'd be thankful. If, if, he, he, if you had given me just the fruit of the Holy Spirit, I would be thankful. But then you gave me the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. And you could sing Diano all night long <laughs> if you really wanted to. And after all the list was done, the second cup was brought up. For the Lord said, I will rescue them from their bondage. I will rescue them from the bondage of this world. I will rescue them from the slavery of sin. And God is saying to his people, I will take you out and separate you from the world. And then I will begin to untangle the world from you. I will begin to set you free from the deceitful web of thoughts and emotions that the world has put in you to keep you in bondage and slavery. And I will release you from slavery and set you free. Oh, yeah. And at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus stood up in the, in the synagogue and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And the recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty those that are bruised. And he said, this day is that scripture fulfilled in your ears. For the Lord is our second cup 
The Lord is the cup of rescue. The Lord is the cup of deliverance. The Lord is all we need to be set free. And he drank it. And he passed it to his disciples. Now these two cups are separated from those. Just so happens that I couldn't put them all together anyway. <laughs> but isn't that cool? Uh, because the first two are before the Passover meal. Then comes the Passover meal in which the lamb had to be spotless. It had to be without any blemish. It had to be killed. It had to all be eaten that night. Amen. And once the lamb was slain and the blood was applied, did you hear me? And the blood, they had, if they didn't apply that blood, they were, they were dead. That's where they were. Okay, so they had to apply the blood. We need to apply the blood of Jesus to our heart, to our soul, to our spirit. Amen. And so, after the Passover was eaten, Jesus reminded them that he, Exodus 6, 6 says, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Amen. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Isaiah 59, 16. And God saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought him salvation and his righteousness, it sustained him. Hallelujah. His outstretched arm bought salvation. Did you hear me? His outstretched arm yeah. bought you salvation. Yeah. And this is the point where he turns to his disciples and he says, and this is the new covenant written in my blood. I will be poured out for you. He says to his disciples, drink all of it. He doesn't say, just have a sip. This, is, this time he doesn't say, just have a sip. He, he says, make sure you drink all of it. Wow, you know, some people, they dip their toe into <laughs> salvation. Or they dip their mouth into salvation. Just say, I believe in the blood. <laughs> But they didn't get it. They didn't drink it all. They, you know, uh, it was like the seed that fell uh, by the wayside where there was rocks and, and all kinds of things that were encumbering it and the birds just came and picked it up and flew away. Drink it all. Drink salvation. Drink it all. It's your redemption. Drink it all. Drink it all. Drink it always. Drink it every day. <laughs> Amen. Make sure it, it's a forever thing for you. Make sure that it gets way down deep inside. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that you are saved. For he did this for you. For this is the cup of redemption for your souls. I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you. In my father's kingdom. Whew. How would he want to go through? Why would he want to go through? All that suffering on the cross for us. And how did he do it? But it says back in Isaiah 46. That his righteousness. Sustained him. Throughout. In other words. He knew. What was beyond the suffering? He could see the joy beyond the cross of each one of us standing before Him in the heavenlies. Amen? And then He could lead. He could lead captivity captive because there was no sin in Him. No grave could keep His body down. Yeah. Yeah. And he led captivity captive, but that was not all he did. But first, thank you, Lord, for redeeming us. And he drank. 
He passed it and said, drink all. Amen. He led captivity captive. What does Ephesians 4, 8 say? And he gave good gifts to men. <laughs> he didn't leave it there. Diane, right? He could have left it there. That was enough. Redemption's enough. That's enough. But no, he gave gifts to men. Amen. So that brings us to the last cup. I like this cup. <laughs> I like this cup a lot. All right. Now, to the Jews, this is the cup of respect. Because God had respect to them. Now, if you look at what's happening in the world today and you see what the Jewish people are going through, uh, but it happens all the time. You know, whether, whether it was... doesn't matter what, what century, then really. My family was always running. You know, <laughs> we had to run out of Spain during the Inquisition, and then the Inquisition was brought to Portugal, so then we had to run to the Azores, and then from, you know, uh, and then uh, the fascists took over Portugal to be, and during the World War II, and my, grand, my great grandfather had to put his 11 kids on a boat and just leave, he was captain of a ship, leave the ship, leave his farm. Actually, we, uh, we still owned it until about 10 years ago. <laughs> and now I'm going, you know, well, I wasn't old enough to be in charge. It was somebody else in the family who was still in charge. Whoever was the eldest of all of the whole family uh, went back to the Azores and they sold the farm. <laughs> they sold the ranch. <laughs> I want that branch back. No. Anyway. <laughs> ah. Anyway. He came here. And he thought this was the land of the free, the home of the brave. Jews really here have not had to worry much about anything, except, you know, the odd, you know, shot at them from here and there. <laughs> But, uh, you know, but God had respect to what they went through. He respects what they went through. Now, if you read Romans chapter 11, would you do that for me this week? You will find out that Paul was really worried about the Romans. Because he really knew that the Romans, what the Romans thought about themselves. What did the Romans think about themselves? They thought that they were the that they were the best people on earth. Yeah. They had conquered the whole of what they thought was almost the whole world. Amen. Yeah. And and they had citizen. You could become a citizen of Rome. Even Paul himself used that card. You know, I'm a citizen of Rome. You can't do this to me. You know. Oh, but they did anyway. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> whew. So. Now you have to think, this was written in, in the 60s, 60 AD, after Jesus, that he wrote to the Romans. And he's saying to them, I can see what's going to happen here. You're going to get so snobby and so uppity. You're going you're gonna to say that the root was no good. You're going to say that you're good, but they don't exist anymore. You're, you're going to spit on them. You're not going to have respect for them. So, this is what I have to tell you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be so prideful. I mean, Don't have a haughty spirit. They are the root, and you are just the branch. Think of it that way. Think of it that way. And he said all, Paul said, all of Israel shall be saved. And that's when Zach, Zachariah says that that's when they shall see him whom they have pierced. Like their only beloved son. They'll get down on their knees and cry. It will come. It will come. Many, many will get saved. Actually, a lot of people are getting saved in Israel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There, 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 
They're so worried about that. <laughs> the rabbis are so worried about that. Why is everybody going to Messianic churches? Uh, me messianic synagogues, I should say. Uh, because they're alive. <laughs> because they know it fulfilled every, that it was Jesus and you messed up, guys. <laughs> for them, it was the cup of restoration. Okay? But for us, it's the cup of blessing. It's a cup of blessing because God just pours and He pours and He pours and He pours and He pours some more and He pours blessings upon us. Amen. And and we just get so, so blessed. And He, and he is blessed because He said, I did this all for you guys because of the joy that was set before me. And so they also call this the cup of joy, the cup of blessing, the cup of joy. Do you know what you have? Brother Paul, do you know what you have here? The cup of blessing. Yeah. Do you know what that means? That means play, I'm so blessed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. For you are my glory and my joy. You are my joy and my crown. Amen. And then the Lord, I believe, going through it all, he saw up into heaven that great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, the Passover Lamb, the real Passover Lamb, clothed with white robes, palms in their hands, and crying with a loud voice saying, Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Would you stand with me while we sing? I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Trouble knocking at my door today. I love it again. Worry wanna steal my joy away. But I never let it win. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. And oh, every day is a good day. You're the reason why. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed. Got this heart beat in my chest. It doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. And when, when I come with the problems that I see, hope the all gone. Oh, when I count the ways you're good to me, you got me counting all day long. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day. A good day, you're the reason why I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got this heart beat in my chest. It doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. You're the reason why I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got things I need in my chest But it doesn't matter about the rest If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed Got things I need in my chest But it doesn't matter about the rest If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed <laughs> uh, singing this song when on the way home we, we had to go into Newark Airport. Anybody ever go into Newark Airport? It's, yes. It's me. <laughs> you, can, you know, of course they drop you off and C and they tell you you gotta go to A and the tram the tram isn't working because they're redoing the whole thing and there's construction everywhere. And you have one hour to get to your next flight from here over here to over there. And you have to get on the right bus. <laughs> and there are a lot of buses. And, uh, and then, 
So we, we finally we finally get there, and, and, and then we're going up the escalator to get to our gate. And I had to do two bags because, you know, Loreline couldn't carry hers. And so I had one bag on top of the other bag, and, I'm, and I got it on the escalator when the top bag <laughs> falls off. And goes oh. down the escalator. Oh. So then I had to turn, go down, and, and grab that bag, and I'm trying to get back up to the other bag. <laughs> and I twisted my back, and I hurt myself, and I got up to the top with both bags, and I said, I'm so blessed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we got right. We got to the gate, and then and and we're just standing there. You think because all these other people are standing there, and and the the guy behind the desk says, "Are you going to Boston?" Said, well, how could they tell? I don't. <laughs> something I said to my wife. <laughs> I said, "Yeah." Well, then get on the plane. <laughs> all these other people are waiting for the next one. <laughs> Oh boy. oh boy. So we got out of the plane. Good. Amen. We made it home. Oh, and yeah. now, all now, together. All together. And together. it will really take a lot uh, to get me to go good. anywhere ever again. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. The older you get, the harder it is to travel. It really is. It really is. Gets gets that way. Amen. I, it doesn't home feel good with that bed that you're used when you to. Come back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so good, and it's so good to be back with you too. Amen. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. So many, many different ways you blessed us. Lord, we could make a list. We could go on forever. We could sing Diana all night long. Because <sighs> you're so good to us. We could list all those blessings, and it would go on and on and on. We know that the enemy is at work. We know it's the end times. We can see all the warning signs around us. But even so, we know we're blessed because you're going to be calling us home soon. We're going to be in that crowd. We're going to be in that millions and billions of people it said, which no man could number of every nation, tribe. And uh, I got to sit next to a, a, uh, an Egyptian uh, young man on the way home on the plane. And uh, he goes to a Coptic church. The Coptic church was started in, in around 100 AD. <laughs> and they still have the same uh, honor of worship in the church, the same things. And they're very more, more, do you know the Essenes? Uh, the Essenes were uh, Joseph of Arimathea. He was an Essene. Uh, a lot of the people uh, that were around Jesus were Essenes. But they, they're, they're more into fasting and praying and, and, and uh, giving up themselves, doing good, making sure that they do good works, etc. It's, it's like, it's considered to be part of their salvation works, you know. We, we separate the two. You know, we separate the two and say, yes, we are saved. But then we say, but without works you're dead. <laughs> so we get you later. Amen. But um, Lord, we thank, we're so thankful for, for people who still believe. And, and we know that Egypt was the first nation outside of Israel that became a Christian nation. Israel had over 150,000 Christians. But as a nation, maybe Egypt was the first nation that the total nation became Christian. That's amazing, isn't it? Because you don't think that way anymore. But Mohammed didn't come until 600 years after Christ. Right. So it was a long time. So all those people who lived during that time, they're in heaven. And they were already worshiping God. Amen. Amen. People from Egypt, people from Syria, people from all these countries that you don't think that there are going to be any Christians in heaven? Oh, you are wrong. <laughs> yeah. It says every, doesn't it? Did I just read that? Every tongue, tribe, every tongue, nation. Tribe. God's going to get at least one. <laughs> make, sure he, make sure his word is right. Amen. So Lord, if there's anybody here this morning that you haven't given your heart to the Lord.
the hundred percent, all, the all. The altars are open for you to come in and ask for God to take you all. Deep down, deep, deep, deep down. No reservations, just reservations in heaven. Amen. Bless the Lord. Oh, 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 oh,
my soul And I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And so, Lord, you know. So you know what your people go through. And you have respect towards it. Because you went through what you went through. Much worse than what we go through. And, and you, without saying, we do sin every once in a while because of those things. 
And uh, Lord, we just come before you. Our shoulder might hurt. Our back might hurt. Uh, we might be having liver trouble. We might be having digestive system problems. We might be having sinus problems. We might be having a hard time paying our bills because they are so high. And we have a hard time buying food because it, it just is out of reach, some of it. But we ask, Lord God, that you provide. Provide healing for those in need of healing. Deliverance for those that are in need of deliverance. And finances for those that are in need. For we ask this in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Don't forget there's a water baptism downstairs. And if you have not been, please do. Oh, blessing, sister. Good to see you. How are you doing? Are you got to bed? Oh, yeah. You get tired. You get sad every once in a while. Oh, put it in here. <laughs> Lord, we just pray right now for my sister. We pray, Lord God, that, that she gets that comfort. That she that she needs. No. No. Thank you.